Hi, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau, and I'm going to talk to you today about the Monteverde Juleria. This is a pen that came out in the summer of 2013, and it's one that kind of got overshadowed a little bit by one of its own siblings, the Monteverde Intima, which came out just a couple of weeks after it. So I wanted to feature the Juleria to give it the proper attention that it, that it should have at a pen's release. Uh, and the reason I want to feature it now is because uh, they had the three original colors that came out, a black, brown, and green, but they recently come out with two new carbon fiber versions uh, for the same price as the other ones. So pretty cool pens. You got some color options and stuff. I wanted to show you what they're all about, feature some of the pens, and show you some more about the Monteverde Juleria. Juleria's come in kind of the standard Monteverde packaging. It's got the typical green box with the sleeve, uh, white inside. It's got the Monteverde logo up here. It's nice, you know, especially for a pen in this price range. It's a nice solid box, protects it well. I don't sweat the box too much for, for packaging for pens in, in this price range because, you know, I recognize you want to you spend most of your money on the pen, not the box. Uh, but some things that are included in here, you get uh, some instructions here. Uh, that are specific to the jewelry and it just kind of tells you how to fill it and stuff. Uh, it comes with a box with a couple of cartridges. I got one blue and one black. Uh, the nice thing about this pen is it does use standard international cartridges, so you don't have any proprietary stuff to have to worry about. Uh, that's kind of one nice thing about Monteverde. So that's the box and, you know, it is what it is. And then here is the pen itself. There are five different colors of the pen. You've got the black, which has got kind of this white swirl. You've got brown, which is really kind of this nice pearlescent swirl. That's been the most popular one of the original three that have come out here. And then a green, which is a nice green pearlescent with a white swirl. This one is the most translucent of the three. And then you have two new ones that are coming out. This is the black carbon fiber. And then you have a silver carbon fiber. Now, for any of you who are true carbon fiber enthusiasts, you know that carbon fiber, the carbon is only black. So this is not actually a true carbon fiber. It's some other kind of fiber. I would guess fiberglass or something like that. But it looks identical to the black carbon fiber. Same kind of weave pattern and everything. Uh, the only difference is it's a silver color. You know, it's not a functional difference when you're dealing with the carbon or anything like that. The fiber itself is really just aesthetic, so it doesn't matter particularly exactly what the material is uh, for the sake of the pen's performance. To show you a little more up close what these materials look like, this is the black one. It's an opaque black, and it's got solid white swirls. Pretty nice looking. I'm usually not too big on black pens, but this one strikes me kind of nice. This one is the brown swirl. You can see as I'm moving it here, it's got some pearlescence to it. Uh, really kind of snazzy looking. It's got these white striations in there that kind of shift and change. Uh, with these swirly pens like this, every pen is going to be a little bit different. So you will get kind of a unique pattern to your individual pen. Here is the green one. Like I said, the green is a little more translucent than some of the others, but it's definitely got that pearlescence to it. It's got some white. This one will be unique to every pen as well. And then the carbon fiber ones. These are gonna have a solid black cap, and then the body is this tight weave carbon fiber with a glossy finish on it. Um, this finish is going to be very similar to the Invincia Deluxe that is also a carbon fiber pen. And then it's got this metal cap on the end, obviously because it's not a solid resin like the other uh, Jewelrias are. Really classy looking. I think that uh, this carbon fiber really suits this pen well. And the cap on the silver carbon fiber is identical. It's that black one again, except it's got that tight weave silver color um, with the silver end on it. Now this one is definitely a little flashier than the black, but I think it looks pretty nice and it complements the trim really well in this pen. Some of the key features of the Juleria, uh, first off, I think is the price. It's a $70 list price. Most places are going to sell it online for $56. That's what I have it at GouletPens.com as of this recording. Uh, and that's really in kind of a nice price range. There's not a lot of pens in that kind of $50 price range. Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen, which some of you may like, some of you may not, but for $50, $56, that's about what you can expect. Uh, it's got some nice features though. It's got a number six nib, which is a large, uh, pretty large nib. 
uh, with a fin, uh, feed that has fins in it. Uh, and the nib is actually removable. It's very easy to clean and maintain this pen. Uh, and when putting it, setting it back in, it's, it's pretty easy because you have uh, kind of this exact recess that's made to fit the nib in the feed. Uh, pretty straightforward there. Um, you can also get the nibs in fine, medium, broad, and 1.1 in both a steel color and a black color. Not a lot of pen companies out there have black tone nibs, and I think the black tone could work just as well as the steel on this pen. Uh, some other uh, key features here. You've got the thinness of the pen. Now for me personally, I have very large hands and I usually post my pens. However, this pen is kind of long and it's a very light pen. Me personally, I don't, I'm not bothered by heavy pens, but I know a lot of people that are. You know, if I take out a pen, like for example, to compare something in their own line, the Invincia. This is an Invincia Deluxe uh, that I have in my personal collection. This pen weighs about 40 grams. It's a pretty heavy pen. The Juria weighs 23 grams. So it's almost half the weight of the Invincia Deluxe, even though it's not that much smaller of a pen. It's just whatever metal they're using or something, however they design the pen, it's significantly lighter. And most of that weight is in the body, however, a good portion of that's in the cap, especially at the top of the cap. So the one drawback I would say to this pen, if you have smaller hands and you like to post it, it's gonna feel very back weighted. Me personally, I have large hands, I hold it back in here and most of the pen is kind of resting in the front. But the pen definitely is back weighted, so it's gonna pull up a little bit uh, as you're writing if you really wanna post your pen. It's not really a bad thing, it's just more of a preference thing. However, for me, I've got really large hands and I find that even leaving it unposted, it's long enough where I feel very comfortable just holding it unposted in my hand. Another nice feature is that this pen actually comes with a converter. When pens get into this, this price range, you tend to kind of expect that, uh, but you know, it's got it, so that's good. Uh, it comes with a Monteverde converter, which is a threaded standard international converter. So it'll fit a regular standard international that you can just push in there. But the thing that I really like about the Monteverde ones is that it threads in. And that really just gives it kind of a secure feel so that you don't have to worry about the nib section dropping off into your ink when you go to fill your pen. To show you how some other pens compare here, I've got the Juria next to an Invincia Deluxe. It's definitely a thinner pen. It's not much shorter, really, but it's way lighter. Uh, some other pens that I have handy, I've got a Platinum Cool, which is going to be pretty comparable in weight and in size. Uh, I've got a Lamy All-Star, which is actually a little bit longer, and weight-wise, it's going to be fairly similar as well. Uh, I've got a Noodler's Conrad. This is a Conrad Acrylic, which is just a little bit longer than the resin ones. Uh, I would say that Conrad is pretty close to the size of the Juria, maybe a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. And then uh, for another comparison here, I have a Twisby 580. Uh, it's similar to a 540 or 530 if you have any of those ones. That pen's gonna be a little bit longer but significantly fatter and has more weight to it than the Juria does. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how it compares to some others. You might be curious to how to actually ink up and write with the pen, so I thought I would do that here for you. I've got the jewelry here. This is the carbon fiber one, and I've got a medium nib. Uh, thought Monteverde Black would be an appropriate ink to use, uh, but you can use any ink of your choice. It does take standard international cartridges or the converter. Personally, I prefer the converter. Um, one thing you may be asking is, hey, you know, mo some cartridge converter pens can also be filled as an eyedropper. Can you do that in this pen? Well, no, you can't because it's got metal components and stuff that'll react with the ink. You can't do that. So I've got the converter here in the pen, so I want to screw it all the way down so that the, the piston inside there is all the way down. I'm going to submerge the ink, uh, the nib all the way into the ink so that it gets up onto the grip. I've got an air bubble in there, and that's not uncommon at all for most pens. I find if you expel just a little bit of ink back out, that'll get rid of most of that air bubble, and that significantly reduces my air bubble. And then I'm just going to take a little tissue here. I usually use paper towels, but I've actually got my tissues across the room, and I'm short on time, so I'm not going to be able to go grab it. So I've got a tissue next to me, so that's what I'm going to use. All right. Then I just put the pen back together and I'm ready to write. 
Now, the paper that I have of choice here is a Rhodia number 16 dot pad with 80 gram white paper. Uh, it's just my preference. I'm very familiar with the paper and I like to use it a lot. Uh, now this pen is going to write very similarly to pretty much any other Monteverde pen you have because the nib, the feed setup is going to be exactly the same. The only one that's going to be different is the Artista Crystal, which uses a smaller nib with a different feed. So i just make sure that my nib's all primed up here. Yeah, very good. All right, so this is a medium nib, and these nibs are going to write similar to European style nibs. Um, so it's going to be, you know, a little bit broader than some of your Japanese brands like maybe Pilot, uh, Platinum, Sailor, those kind of things. Um, it's going to write fairly similar to Lamy. So if you, you know Lamy Fine, Medium, uh, whatever, that's pretty comparable. It's got a good flow to it. Um, the nib is pretty smooth. Um, thing I like about uh, Monteverde, you know, is uh, you can pull the nibs out, very easy to clean, and they're pretty straightforward, you know, the, it's just become, you know, one of my more, uh, more favorable brands just because of kind of their consistency and, uh, you know, their predictability. So uh, I'm a big fan of this. It's, uh, it's got a good amount of wetness to it. Of course, this ink itself is pretty wet writing as well. Uh, the Monteverde, it's kind of a lubricated ink. You can see here how wet of a line it's putting down. And then if I'm doing like really quick stuff, it's not gonna have any problem keeping up with the flow. Nib smoothness is pretty, gar pretty darn good. Um, I haven't really had a lot of trouble with Monteverde nibs, to be honest with you. Every now and then I'll get one that needs to be tweaked a little bit, but it's not really tough to do and um, it just doesn't happen all that often. So. All in all, I would say I really like the Jewelria. For me personally, it's not like my everyday carry pen, uh, but it is, I, I think, a really good pen for its price range. It's one that if you want something that's kind of a business look, uh, a little bit classier kind of looking pen, something a little fancier, but uh, that can be a reliable writer, I would definitely give the Jewelria a look. If you have any other questions about the Jewelria or any other fountain pens, you can always pose a comment here on Ink Nouveau or on YouTube, or you can always leave a message for me on Twitter or on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching today, and right on.